Why did you say it like that? Um, I don't hire black people. Tuv dropped a video. It's called Racism Approach in Cartoon. I feel like these are gonna be old cartoons. Did, did any- I'm not gonna lie, bro. What happened to cartoons being- giving, like, lessons? I mean, I'm not saying they're, they, they weren't goaded or anything. Cartoons really used to be dropping, like, knowledge back in the 90s for kids. And we ended up from- from Captain- what was it called? Captain Planet, right? Captain Planet that was teaching kids lessons to do good and whatever to Uncle Grandpa. <laughs> PBS still does. Yeah, but I'm talking about actual cartoon networks. Let's be real. Let's be real. PBS, let's be real. So let's, let's see. Let's Kids cartoons and TV shows tend to be a distraction from the real world. A different life you can access with the click of a button on a remote. And for that reason, they're fiction. But what about when they try to implement real world problems and teach the kids watching a valuable lesson? Sometimes they go right, and other times they go extremely wrong in the eyes of the audience. Hey guys, my name is- Right, and other times- Who remembers the Steven Universe thing? Does anybody remember these? I, I remember this came out and everybody hated it. I forgot why. Times they go extreme. Didn't it, didn't it come out because don't don't deny it, defy it. Oh, th this was a racism one. Hey kids, don't be racist. Yeah, it was that. wrong in the eyes of the audience. Hey guys, my name is Tub, and today I bring you another cartoon related video. We actually haven't made one of these in a while. In fact, it's been over a year. Anyway, today we'll be talking about exactly how. Ra I'm, I'm gonna skip right to the video, but everybody go check out Tub's brand, Earl. Bro, he's going crazy. It's actually it's actually really cool. I'm with it. Static Shock, Season 1, Episode 8, Sons of the Fathers. Static Shock aired on Kids WB in late 2000. It ran for four seasons, and the show was about Virgil Hawkins, a 14-year-old boy who contracted superpowers after exposure to a mutagen gas, those being electromagnetic powers which he would use for the sake of good under his alias, Static. The show follows the adventure he and his best friend, Richie Foley, get into, which involved helping Dakota City for the greater good. I think I've seen this before. The racist dad episode, I think I've seen this. I, I didn't see the episode, but I remember seeing some like talk about it it was something like that from what i remember it was a lesson like the <laughs> i'm not even gonna spoil it for some of you that haven't seen it i'm not gonna spoil it, it was something like that. it's your typical children's superhero show to say the least however one thing the show was praised for was its approach to social issues in season one episode eight sons of the fathers we get a look as to how the directors wanted to communicate that racism is not only a systemic old-fashioned problem but also that it's just wrong the episode starts off with a group of villains known as the meta breed invading the local mall and robbing innocent civilians then static comes through to save the day yada 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 you know People it's always going. funny when heroes wear an eye mask and still aren't recognized like bro do you even know your son's face or voice anyway that's not the point True. a little argument ensues between richie True. and virgil's sister sharon she complains that he's there every day so much so that he should be paying rent virgil defends him and says richie is welcome to their home any day of the week shortly after this time passes and virgil says you know what my sister's right. We never hang out at your place. And Richie panics, looking for excuses, but doesn't have any. So they agree that on Friday, Virgil can spend the night. We also have a Metabreed subplot going on in the episode, which I'm not going to get too into. Friday night comes along, and Virgil uh -huh. and Richie are hanging out in- Tommy, Static Shock had a NGTA school shooter episode. The school shooter got bullied and pulled a gun on his bully. I'm gonna have to watch that on my own time to see if that's real. I don't know if he, I don't know if he's capping or not. This show seems crazy. That's my <laughs> this show seems crazy. Bro, they tackling everything. And this was back in the 90s. So guess what I just learned, guys? 87% of you guys are not subscribed. That's like the biggest number out of any other YouTube I've ever seen. So do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. On the real though, like please subscribe. I need to feed me and my family and my editor, so please do a in his room and it seems Richie plans to specifically invite Virgil when his dad wasn't home and instead working a night shift. It seems the mom was also in on it too. But then the living room door opens and it's revealed Mr. Foley is home early. Virgil says hi and Mr. Foley ignores him. Somebody photoshopped this with the MAGA hat real quick. You know what I think I'll do it myself. This is, is this not the perfect face for like a MAGA hat? Then they have an awkward quiet dinner. You know those awkward dinners where you only hear the forks clanking? I no, I don't eat dinner with my family. Who has a nice family dinner? Families are fun when they're chaotic. I hate those moments. Virgil breaks the silence by telling Richie he brought a rap CD they can listen to later, and Mr. Foley intervenes, saying rap music is garbage and disrespectful. He also says it, quote, tears down everything guys like me built, insinuating, you know, that he's a white man and people that listen to rap most likely aren't. Eventually, Virgil is making Damn. his way to the bathroom through the hallway and overhears Mr. Foley talking to Richie's mother, saying, and I quote, and now I see why Richie acts like a hood, Maggie. That kid's a bad influence. All his kind are. Yeah! <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. You know all this kind. Listen to that rap music. Tupac. This was back in Tupac times, right? Tupac. Big smiles. Awesome. God damn it. Not gonna say it. Black power. Okay. Come on. 
It's bad enough I gotta they deal with the them all day long. Kind now word. one of them's in my house. And as any normal human would, Virgil leaves. Shout out Richie for writing for his homeboy though, because he straight up calls his dad out for being racist and tells him he hates him. Well, you got what you I be feeling I be feeling bad, bro. Cause I know this dead how my uncle talks. I was literally about to say that. Bro, people, some people don't understand, but like, I, I, I have a, I have a, my, I have, my friend, my friend's dad is very, um, you know, I'm not even gonna say it, bro, but like a lot of people's parents, like they'll be like that and their, and their kids feel so embarrassed. Like they're either one of the phobics or isms or, I mean, racist, bro, any one of them. And like they, bro, I can tell, like they just feel so, so, so bad, like so sad for them. So sad or embarrassed by them. Dad. My best friend's gone because of you and your stupid racism. I hate you. The day after. <laughs> that should have that been a, as funny as it was. Stupid racism. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was just, that was just, that just sounded funny. Here, Virgil gets a phone call from Maggie, Richie's mom, explaining that Richie is missing. She also Man, apologizes. We can the, see that the only racist beers. in the house is Mr. Foley. Then we get to see Richie get chased by an armadillo man and a... Wolf man. What the okay. hell? We also get to see Mr. Foley ask Virgil's father for help in a very obnoxious way. He says, Look, he looked like Mr. Incredible. Richie never mentioned Virgil and his family were black. As annoyed as Mr. Hawkins is, he's still willing to help track down Richie. They have a discussion about what was said that previous night where Mr. Hawkins confronts Foley. He calls him an ignorant bigot that's blind to the world moving forward. He also says Damn. Richie doesn't like his own dad, and because of that, he'll never truly get to have a good relationship with his own son. Then he says, Richie ran away from you a long time ago, and who can blame him? Richie ran away from Damn. you a long time ago, Foley. And who can blame him? Z Okay, okay. Long story no, short, a fight cooking. breaks out between the villains and the dads trying to save Richie, though are incapable of doing so. Then Static comes in to save the day, and Mr. Foley is extremely grateful that his son was saved by, you know, a black superhero. The episode ends with Mr. <laughs> Foley, Virgil, and Richie all heading to Comic Con. I wonder if that, I wonder if that, bro, I'd be wondering that. Like, if I took, yo, if I took a white supremacist, he absolutely hates me for my skin color or racism. And like, he's in a death situation. He's on a hill about to fall. And I grab his hand and save him. There's no way he's gonna be racist anymore, right? I mean, I saved his life. I saved his life. That needs to be tested. I feel like if we did that to every like racist person, like if we did that exact scenario, nobody would be racist and we'd have peace. So let's set that up. Every racist person, we put them like on a cliff. They're about to fall and then they get saved. By me, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll be the one. The father's Did attitude is noticeably different, treating Virgil as he would anyone else. I really like how the directors chose right, to make cool. the dad being racist just as big a problem as supervillains, and they don't shove it in your face either. It was genuinely a good life lesson that was approached in a calmly and mature manner. I see why the show was heavily praised. Dwayne McDuffie, one of the two creators of the original Static Shock comics, focused heavily on giving minorities an important role in pieces of media. Fun fact, mm. since we're talking about Static Shock, they actually you know had they a, didn't like that back then. a gun PSA and a dyslexia PSA. In the dyslexia one, they tell kids to not be afraid to tell an adult if they're having trouble reading, and they're no less than anyone else. And the gun PSA is a bit more morbid. Okay, th like that was true for back then, because a lot of kids had dyslexia and they didn't know that. But some of y'all stop using that as an excuse, bro. There's so many people I've seen that use dyslexia as an excuse for their grammar and them not being able to do this and that. No, you're just stupid. You're just stupid. Showing a little girl placing a rose on a tombstone. Damn. Uh, oh hey you two <laughs> that's bad that's bad oh hey guys it's just me and earl hanging out you know just waking up okay i'm gonna go but right I'm into here it. As you can see y'all go check out earl everything the simple drop everything right now that scared so, me go. for a second that's <laughs> hey yo <laughs> y'all go check out earl though be in my possession there was a to do right. episode 10 that's true raven. colors that's a raven aired on disney channel for four seasons from 2003 to 2007 it was about a teenage girl raven dealing with the average problems of the youth but there was a twist she Man, could I, see I, into the future i didn't watch this i didn't wa i know i don't even say in chat y'all watch this but i didn't watch this I, I think this was um this was a little bit older than me i always personally thought that was a little bit corny but the show was a huge success so me right anyways that's season so raven is so good it tw it twisted i know you did not just say that <laughs> Twister, you're 13. Shut the f up. <laughs> Shut the f up. <laughs> you was not watching That's So Raven. You was not. I did. You was not watching That's So Raven. <laughs> 
Nah, come in three, on. episode 10, True Colors, begins with the Baxter family cooking up soul food in celebration of Black History Month. And Raven announces that she and her best friend Chelsea are going to be applying to a Wait, store. Wait, did it say Black like History Month? Hold on. Celebration of Black History Month. And Raven announces. Why do I think? Okay, is it bad that I thought Black History Month was only like a modern thing? I think it was a modern thing that was celebrated. I honestly only found out about Black History Month, what? Probably like five years ago? I'm talking about like I was never taught it. Oh, don't get mad at me. I was never taught it. Is that she and her best friend Chelsea are going to be applying to a store in their local mall known as Sassy's. They go to apply and are met with multiple tasks, so the manager gets an idea of who would be a good employee. Raven does everything right, and Chelsea, well, Chelsea every single challenge up. At the same time, Corey man. is supposed to be writing a 500-page essay on a historic black Oh, man. If y'all know what happened uh, to, to, to Corey, y'all be laughing too. Or, 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 or not laughing. I don't know year but finds it boring so mr baxter encourages him to be more enthusiastic about his race we cut to the next day at school where chelsea gets a phone call from the sassy's manager and becomes ecstatic finding out she got the job then she asks about raven and is told that she didn't raven gets a vision and the manager can be heard saying this the truth is i don't hire black people chelsea decides that's not nice that's not nice, guys. Why'd you say it like that? Um, I don't hire black people. They made sure to get the right angle, too. I don't hire black people. <clears throat> Let's go. Decides to quit for obvious reasons. Meanwhile, Corey falls asleep at his desk, and his dad dressed up as Frederick Douglass comes out of his, his computer. At first watch, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? But then I remembered, oh yeah, Corey fell asleep. I just wish they transitioned into his dream better. Literally a vortex transition would have done the job. Anyway, Corey is taught about a lot of black figures that should be respected due to their contribution to America's history. Now back to Raven. She explains to her parents that she didn't get the job because the manager just doesn't like black people. They try to come up with a plan to get the manager Damn. fired, but realize they have no evidence other than Raven's vision. So she comes up with a plan to record her saying it and submit it to the news. She quickly calls Chelsea and tells her not to quit and instead wear a hat with a camera in it. While working, Raven comes in with a disguise and this is where the vision took place. The manager is then caught being racist. Once that happens, we cut to the television where the news anchor explains the manager has been fired and the company issued a public- Nah, this is different. What? <laughs> Okay, look, this is this is the thing. Maybe it was just different back then. I think back then they were just like openly racist. And but being openly like whatever you are, I don't care how bad of a person you are. I feel like people stop doing it at their jobs. Like that's the one place they stop. Like apology. Truth is, I don't hire black people. And there you have it. Oh, and Corey also got the essay done out of passion rather than being forced by his school. I think the episode did a great job capturing how easily people can be racist and how heavily it can affect the recipient. For example, not being able to get a job. Though, I never got into that so Raven because I was too young. My older sister loved the show and I remember bits and pieces here and there and it was a pleasant surprise to see how they chose to tackle racism in this episode. Sesame Street, Season 25, Episode 5. Racism okay. on Sesame Street. I don't Wait, really think Sesame Ses Street? Sesame Street? Sesame Street needs an introduction, so I'm not gonna do one. But we're gonna be talking about Season 25, Episode 5, Racism on Sesame Street, which okay. aired on November 26th, 1993. The whole episode is actually available on YouTube, but it's split into two parts. The episode starts off with Gina and Savian walking around Sesame Street and having some innocent fun. Then they walk into a shop, which I'm gonna assume Gina has some ownership of, and they're startled to be receiving an anonymous phone call telling them that people of different skin colors can't be friends. They assume it's a random bystander what? that saw them outside so they explained to telly the muppet Damn, that wasn't there are some this in, like back then wasn't this like in, near after segregation ended i'm pretty sure season 25 was in 1993 bro y'all don't know how old sesame street is sesame street is literally older than some of your parents they might be older than some of your grandparents stupid people in this world and telly is confused as to why this I'm is a conversation really, I, to have in the first place then like telly asks what they would do if that person thing. calls again and they mock the idea of it happening by making a fart sound <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they just solved the racism. Shout out to Sesame Street. <laughs> yes! Yes! Remember guys, this is a <laughs> this is a toddler show. Then the story moves on to a different plot revolving yeah, around Telly like and his that. friend Baby Bear. Telly is telling Baby Bear about what happened, and again, they're both confused. And in kids' show fashion, they sing a song about being best friends. Yo, in the wild, do y'all think they're racist to bears? Like like brown bears, there's there's brown bears, black bears, white bears. You think there's like a like a racism hierarchy? 
probably i don't know i mean maybe maybe it could be possible pretty cute the reason they're hanging out together is because they set up an information shop where they sell information about anything for one penny gina comes by and nothing really notable happens besides a monologue about a stereotype that girls should be more scared of things than boys the episode ends with mm -hmm. gina and savion looking at the sesame street apartments wondering if the anonymous guy is watching them so they decide to loudly God, sing the Gero, best i think i can find world war one footage higher quality than friend this. song hoping that the racist will see you know since this show is for smaller kids i'd say they did a good job here if it was for teens True. it would have been a fail but they made it so that the anonymous racist has no argument which means we only get to see telly's side of confusion yeah, and two things. They got reasoning that it's just the product they of bad people during the racism. year of 2020 sesame street continued to push the anti-racism agenda due to the problems going on at the time the videos i watched were honestly pretty innocent and educational Hold up, is this in a zoom call uh, due to the problems going on bro i'm gonna be real i don't think kids nowadays are even watching sesame street they're all watching coco melon and coco melon you can be damn sure they're not teaching no lessons they're not teaching no lessons there's always johnny apple one apple johnny apple two apple sesame street was cool though we thank you for uh doing your thing at the time the videos i watched were honestly pretty innocent and educational which confused me on the amount Two. of dislikes they got though comments were disabled so i couldn't check out bro any they, they the only reason they disliked it is because um back when all this was going on or whatever people were like trying to say oh my god everybody's acting so woke this is honestly what birthed like the red pillars and whatnot and like people saying end wokeness and all that this is what birthed it the opinions i decided to go to the source of the video which was cnn's twitter which has 11 million views and i was able to gather a glimpse of the negative comments i knew it i this told you i'm gonna i told you i told you i told you has 11 million views and i was that's right feed all the kids socialist propaganda propaganda while they are still young to think for themselves louis forgot to explain the part about the rioters and looters fascist propaganda wow so now we're we going to pro so now we're going to program black kids to hate white kids on a children's show what do you think these protests are they are white hate protests and creating black entitlement uh -huh, it's elmo it's elmo la 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 elmo's world come on i swear they always gotta make I, this is why i hate politics they always make something about wokeness and vice versa on the other side people that are trying to be woke they do the same thing i hate politics was able to or gather a glimpse year olds, of the negative they really be like <laughs> full grown adults complaining on twitter comments this is why i'm gonna assume the videos talking about racism have dislikes but i also found these wholesome images too Okay. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Season 1, Episode 6, Mistaken Identity. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air aired from 1990 oh, to 1996 damn. on NBC and followed a street smart teen played by Will Smith, whose name is Will Smith. I didn't grow up with this show, but I didn't know Will Smith played Will Smith in this show. <laughs> anyway. The I feel like, bro, I feel like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is still like cool to watch. I watched a couple episodes before. And it's, it, it holds up. It holds show up. follows Will Smith and the troubles he gets into in the neighborhood of Bel Air, Los Angeles. In season one, episode six, Mistaken Identity, the episode begins with Uncle Phil and his wife, Vivian, going to Fuck a retreat you, in Palm Springs. They break the news to the kids that they're staying at home. So Will comes up with a plan to ask Uncle Phil's boss if he needs him to drive his car over there since they'll be flying in a helicopter. So Will and Carlton attempt to drive the Mercedes to Palm Springs, but are suddenly stopped by a cop. Carlton is hopeful as he says the policeman is their friend and should be able to give them some direct directions since they're oh, lost. Nah. Will <laughs> yeah, GG's. Instructs Carlton to keep his hands on the wheel, but he doesn't listen and instead goes for a handshake. The police officer then tells him to keep his hands on the wheel. Carl Bro, this isn't 20, 20, 2020 adapted. Brother, if you went for the handshake now, hey officer, can I get a handshake? Put your hands down! Bow, 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 bow. Of course, this is all in a video game scenario. What? I'm being realistic. Carlton is extremely innocent and Will is telling him what not to do and he just ignores him. He takes out his license and registration and says that the car isn't his by the way, which prompts the officer to tell him to get out the car. And then we cut to the police station where Will is giving Carlton a pep talk on how cops treat black people and how to talk back to them by keeping their answers short and sweet. This doesn't seem mm. to get through Carlton's head though, as he's saying more than he should to the cops, which just makes their story seem fake, furthering the cops' suspicions that these two black males stole the car. They get a chance to make a phone call, so they call the boss's wife and she mistakes I'm in jail 
for I'm in Yale. She then later hangs up and tells Carlton's parents that he got into Yale, leaving them confused. Then the duo end up getting thrown <sighs> in the cell and Will comes up with a plan to only confess to the crimes they didn't commit if a camera crew shows up and broadcasts it. Only. Uncle Phil and his wife end up seeing this as it interrupts the football game everyone was watching at the retreat and they go to the station demanding the kids are set Wait, free. Why, the why is a football game broadcasting jail? Cops disrespect them though, not seeing them as real people. And then why Henry the first shows up, the boss and owner oh, no, man, of the car, cool. and the cops cool. treat him with the utmost respect. Henry says he knows those kids and Uncle Phil tells the cops to let them free before he sues them as he's a lawyer. Damn. Once at home, Will and Carlton have a serious discussion about racism against black people as Carlton is oblivious to it even after the event. He says that the cops were quote, just trying to do their jobs, which anger- Bro, it's crazy because like this is so true. Bro, this is so, uh, like, this is, uh, this is so true. People only think, like, like, I'm telling y'all right now, bro, all it takes is being upper class. And as soon as you don't experience those things, you would just be saying whatever. Well, I don't face the problems. You live in a f***ing million dollar gated community. But yeah, that's definitely true. Here's Will, and he tells him that no matter what, as long First as they're black, the their lives will be show. harder than the average white man. The episode ends in a very morbid way, with no happy ending, as Carlton is trying to make sense of why they were stopped. He claims they were just driving too slow, and that's why the cops stopped them. If you were a policeman, and you saw a car driving two miles an hour, wouldn't you stop it? Yes. I asked myself that question the first time I was stopped. Oh. Good night, son. Then the camera pans out, and we see Carlton reflecting on being racially profiled. We fade to black, and Carlton the credits Thomas roll. Hell. There's no music like usual. It's just quiet. Honestly, it's an extremely real look at what it could be like finding out that you're in the minority. Not only that, but realizing the fact that your life is going to be a lot harder than it should be. I really like this episode. I always like, and I'm sure many of you do too, when shows okay, get serious. Okay, there's a difference though for this one. Y'all gonna understand, Carl Carlton is a full-grown man. You figure out that stuff probably, for most people, like, realistically, I want to say young, but when you're young, you really don't care like that. I'm gonna say like 10. I mean, yes. Yeah. Especially when there's not a happy ending. It's only real life. Imagine being if you guys an actor are interested, you're asked to make play sure you go racist. look it up and watch it. It. That's uh, tough. It's a really good watch. Okay. Arthur, season 21, episode Arthur! 4. Arthur! Every day when you're walking down the street. Arthur takes a stand. Arthur aired on PBS go, from Arthur. 1994 to 2022. Bro, wait, 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 wait. Speaking of Arthur, did y'all see, um, did y'all see a while ago, but the teacher got married? Arthur's teacher got married, basically, to another guy, and, like, people were like, oh my god, like, people were so pissed. <laughs> I don't even got nothing to say on it, bro, it's just funny. They were like, how do you make a rats gay? <laughs> I'm, they were like, how do you make rats gay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it barely ended last year. That's fucking crazy. Though the show did go on several hiatuses, so it wasn't active for a couple of those years. The show takes place in the fictional city of Elwood and focuses on third grade student Arthur the Aardvark and his other anthropomorphic friends. In season 21, episode 4, which came out in 2017, the principal announces that breakfast will now be served in the cafeteria along with the lunch. The kids are excited, uh -huh. but after Arthur comes back due to forgetting his notebook, he realizes that the lunch lady, Mrs. McGrady, has no one to help her and is being overworked. He's shocked and says that the school needs to hire more helpers, but she says she's already attempted, but heard no response back. So Arthur goes to the principal and tells her Mrs. McGrady deserves some more help, which she just ignores. She's too distracted by breakfast doing so good. And I don't know if the principal having white skin and Mrs. McGrady having brown skin had a role to play in this, so I don't want to make an assumption about that, but it's definitely something I was wondering while watching. Arthur talks to Sue on his way home about the situation, and she suggests the idea of boycotting until something is done. Here, she mentions figures like Martin Luther King and John Lewis. So then in the library, a cartoon version of John Lewis appears and gives Arthur a talk about standing his ground. Not gonna lie, they probably, they probably could have drew him a no no they probably they probably they probably could have um i probably could have drew them a little a little, a little bit better a, l a little bit better Round <sighs> between you and me i feel like they could have given john lewis uh, a, a less human face anyway yeah. arthur his friends and mrs mcgrady all choose to not leave the lunch tables until something is done the principal comes in and tries to shut everything down in an annoyed fashion but the group doesn't budge it's only until john lewis spawns in that the principal guarantees she'll contact the school board as soon as possible the episode then ends and this one was different from the others i've talked about this one focused more so on the response to being mistreated of course in a non-violent way boycotting has worked mm. in the past as a peaceful protest method, so I don't see why anyone would get mad that your kids are being taught to stand up for what they believe in in a peaceful way. This is another good episode, which tackled a very hard subject of responding to prejudice in why a non-violent way. I still shows? think this portrayal of John Lewis could have this been a like lot better. This is like 2020, I think. Jesus. Steven Universe, BLM, PSA. Oh, Steven was this the one people hated? 
Was this the one people were hating on? I, th I think this was the Universe one. ran on Cartoon Network from 2013 to 2019 and had a spinoff called Steven Universe Future that ran from 2019 to 2020. The show was about a young boy named Steven and the mm. Crystal Gems, aka alien warriors who protect humanity from the evils it faces, those being Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. Oh, and Steven. The show was very LGBT friendly, which meant it was controversial, but it's also loved by many. I mean, Steven Universe has an extremely strong and diehard fan base, whether people like it or not. Though I've only heard a toxic fan base. A very toxic. Well, I never watched Steven Universe, but some of those fans are chronically online and insane. Steven Universe is a goaded show, though. And I'm not denying that. You know, it seems fire. I never watched it. Heard that the Steven Universe fan base is cringeworthy, and it seems even some yeah. of the people in the fandom don't like the community either. I yeah. do really like the animation style, though. I always have. Oh, and the theme song. That's just kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie. That's just kind of hard. Anyway, in 2020, the Steven Universe team released a short on YouTube titled oh, "Don't no. Deny It, Defy It," and it starts off with two little boys on the playground holding hands, and one of them saying, "When we're older, let's get married," which leads another kid to say, "You can't get married. Black people can't marry white people." Yeah, she says it in that tone. <laughs> I don't know if I can play the clip for copyright, but if I can Why Mary Gamma why why did it like uh oh. can then you're probably about to hear it. Hey, when we're older, let's get married. Ha! Oh you no. You can't get married. Why not? Black people can't marry white people. And then Garnet Not a hit that hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get married. Why not? Black people can't marry white people. And then oh, Garnet comes though, in to say, though. don't be racist. And then we get a behind the scenes look of the filming of the PSA. And the little white kid says, stuff like this doesn't actually happen in real life. Which leads to him getting a little lesson about how racism is very real in the real world. That's it. Oh, Honestly, man. at first look, you I didn't give a hard, fuck. I didn't think crazy. it was good or bad. But geez, 125,000 dislikes? What went wrong? Since the comments were disabled due to it being a YouTube kids video. The crystal gem says, but on a tech nods, racism to act against it. Don't be, don't be silent. Use your voice and privilege to help. Uh, why'd they put that? <laughs> I'm sorry, but when, like when this was going on where they would put like the, like every fist or whatever. That was something. I found a video uploaded around the same time by a YouTuber named Just the Robot titled Steven Universe Kids Don't Be Racist PSA is Strange. And the major complaint that people had was that the PSA tried too hard to bring the LGBT into this by making the kids in the commercial gay, which distracts people from the mm. racism problem. I also saw some complaints mm. about the little white boy apologizing too quickly, which just made it seem fake. So I'm guessing this is why there's a huge amount of dislikes. Though the Steven Universe team tried again in the following year and got a lot better reception. They got straight to the point no. and had a short conversation about about being anti-racist. I'm guessing the dislikes on that was just people that just don't want their cartoon characters talking about real world I think matters. people just I saw the first clip. I, I don't even know about the second part. I remember that first part though, it became a meme. Like Mary Cam. <laughs> That's still funny. After they slightly acknowledged the bad reviews of the last PSA, this they time Steven's the dad possible. was the one explaining and talking about being an ally, and I see why it got a better reaction from the audience. There is such a thing as trying to be too progressive, which just makes the general audience annoyed. True. Even though this PSA got some dislikes as well, I'm glad they were able to end on a more positive note. Alright, that was it for this video. If you guys wow. liked it, make sure to leave a like. Bro, great video. Great video. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just so like, I think this was interesting. The thing is, to, to me, if it's approached in a good way, right? It, to, to me, if it's, if it's approached in a good way, then it could do good for everybody. But then you have sh the Steven Universe one, and that's the one that makes people like, oh my God, look how woke this has become. This and that, this and that. And they're the ones that do it. They're, they're, they're like, they're the ones that do it, bro. They be the ones that do it. But to me, bro, I, I feel like, you know, like the, what, what was that show? Static Shock, they did it in like a good way. And if it's pushed too much, then like, of course people are gonna fucking hate it, bro. It's like getting broccoli shoved down your throat or something.